Welcome to all the early comers. Guess what? We are in the new studio space. I think, Aaron, you should come up here and do like, <laughs> and give sort of the, the official welcome. But um, Aaron and Matt have been working really hard on getting in this new space up and running, and it is pretty amazing. Um, but this is the first time we are streaming from this space. So guess what? Woo! Spoiler alert, probably <laughs> we're gonna have a few bugs. But, uh, but welcome everybody to SketchUp Live. Yay! Did you got an official intro for us, Matt? Um, here we go. It's Friday again. SketchUp Live. You know it. You're here for the business. And here we go. This is a good piece of business. We got a hand plane for you today. So Tyson's going to wow you with all his woodworking prowess and knowledge and SketchUp knowledge as well. And... Hopefully, you'll learn something. And here we go. Take it away, Tyson. Yay! <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> well done, well done. Matt's got that smooth voice. He's <laughs> <laughs> an intro machine. It is fantastic. So, the... Um, Let's talk, let's talk hand planes for a moment. Um, I brought in this lovely little number three Stanley smoother. And, and not that uh, I expect many of you do woodworking, but if you do, this is probably what you think of typically for a hand plane. And uh, this, was, this was actually, this was a nice find, a little flea market find from Jody that uh, just a few weeks ago. We're not going to do something quite like this. What we're going to do today is called an infill uh, coffin smoother. And the difference is that it's a lot more organic. So if we were to model this one, it would be a, it'd be a fun project. Maybe we'll do that someday. If there's interest in it, you know, shout it out. But uh, an infill smoother is just overall, we're going to do a curve. It has curved sides. If you do the coffin style, which we're going to do, the, the wooden pieces are actually embedded and they're larger and they're more uh, shaped. So there's kind of some interesting challenges that I thought would be fun to, to do. And so that, that's what we're going to, we're going to go with, we're going to run with it. So if you're, if you're a plain guy, the things you just said make sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm just for, for the, uh, and, and for, for those non plain guys, we're not talking about an airplane. This is a woodworking tool with a sharp cutty part inside of it. And that's, that's what Tyson's going to work on. Um, that is an official term, by the way, the cutty part. Oh yeah. Yeah. I looked, I looked at some schematics. There's yeah. actually something called a frog. So it's believable. Hey. <laughs> this is the frog. So, <laughs> um, I thought what we do, so here's what we're going to do to start. Let me going to go to sort of a front view and we're just going to, the, if you build one of these planes, they're typically, this is an old school style of plane. And so they're, they're more custom and you typically would build one. So we're going to kind of draw one out and get our basic shapes first before we build it in 3d. And, um, let's see. So we are going to start, this one is going to be nine, 10 inches long. Let's say it's 10 inches long and we'll start. All right, something like this. And then move this up, let's say uh, three eighths of an inch. That, that would be a really thick sole, but we'll go with that for now. Um, and then kind of just, let's just draw in and, and tweak some ideas. So somewhere in the middle around here, Something like this is where the plain iron is going to go. As opposed to a fancy iron, this is just a plain iron. It's just a plain iron. Just plain a Jane. Plain old iron. Shh, Aaron. So, so my, this, my so, so right Tyson, you, you are basically designing your own plane at this point. Is that what's happening? That is, that is what's to say? happening. Okay. And, um, and I think if anybody were to do this, they would take more time than we will. But yeah. 
So we're just, let's say two inches up and let's create a few basic shapes. So one of the things that we could start with here, this line, we actually can, we, we could know this um, as a starting point. So if we use our protractor tool, a typical hand plane will come up 45 degrees. Um, but for some of these smoothing planes, they'll use an angle of say 50 degrees or a little more. Um, so we're gonna say 50 and that will give us the actual angle of the, the plain Jane iron we're gonna use. That sounds good. That's been my experience too, that usually, yeah, around 50 or so degrees for one of these <clears> types. It's <throat> usually what If Matt says it, we're going with it. Yeah, I, I went 52 once. That was just too much. Ooh. Yeah. So bold. <laughs> <laughs> That's really pushing it. Too, too much. And let's see. So then um, a typical, let's say, handle on this, um, especially for a smoother, be a little smaller. And it's not un uncommon. I'm kind of on the larger side of people. <laughs> and so... <laughs> You know, you'll you'll hold it with say three fingers or even Spider Man it, something like that. Um, mm, that's cool. But this, let's say this is uh, start four and a half, something like that, and then use that. So we'll just draw some arcs in here, create a handle that looks kind of interesting. I think not that. Let me go in. We're working at real scale and I've got snapping at 1 16th. So I want to turn that off and make sure we can get a little bit smaller. We need the precision. That's right. That's what we're going for. Yeah, and unlike the other people that are on mic today, I uh, maybe you caught a little bit of when I was talking about the angle, but I have no experience in woodworking at all. Maybe I whittled something when I was in Cub Scouts or something like that, but I, um, I am uh, just in the presence of greatness, I feel like, with making woodworking. So uh, I'm just here to learn, basically, because I look at this like thing and I'm like, I hope you know what you're putting together here because to me it just looks like you're randomly putting together uh shapes well i am i mean yeah, that's the way to start <laughs> what what makes you think this isn't random <laughs> but uh random with a lot of experience is uh, more valuable than me just using bezier curves and <laughs> someone somewhere has a, a plan right now that's that's the important part mm -hmm. that's what i'm here for the plan all right, so let's see. I'm going to draw. It is nice of uh, Jody, though he's not in the office. He's off today, but he's still uh, in the comments punning oh, it up. So Dropping A-level um, puns. Yeah. You know, that's what we were missing was a little sarcasm in here. So, you know. <laughs> Wait, a little sarcasm? I thought we were talking about Jody. <laughs> he's been taking it easy, right? Like, he, he is off, so he doesn't need his full full cannon sized sarcasm <laughs> yeah that's just that's saved for a regular work day when you need it <laughs> as like a protection against the elements but, uh... so just for anybody who's joining tyson is i believe correct me if i'm wrong tyson but working through uh, some basic profile designs for the plane. So you're you're drawing what this is gonna look from the look like from the side, right? Creating those those profiles first. That is correct. So again, we're if you're joining us, we're doing a hand plane today, 
and we're starting out by just like you say getting the profiles kind of getting the the look of it that we want we've got a few things that we're working with kind of the overall length that we want the blade placement which is this angled line but otherwise this is kind of just a the aesthetics of it are a little bit up to you know personal preference so let's, let's nail this down and, and keep going i think something like that and then we will bring that over straight i think we can we can work with this now since you're doing like kind of a custom design shape here are you are you keeping in mind the like your bigger hands are you trying to make the hand grip a little bit bigger than like the previous ones you have or no that's a fair point i am I'm, i made this hand a little higher perhaps than it might be but i think anybody who would do this for real like it'd be a good exercise to draw this out print it out and actually like do a few a little bit of testing mm -hmm. like, you know does this actually have any you know, how does this actually feel? But yeah, gonna, for sure. Getting an actual physical prototype is a good way to, to, uh, test stuff out for sure. All right. That is good. Let's build this out a little more. So Also, because we're in the studio, none of us have to wear headphones anymore. So at least the people in the in the uh, in the studio, so we are able to play sound effects out loud, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh, it's not coming through here. Oh, you guys just missed an awesome sound effect. Oh, man, <laughs> what's happening right now? Um, later on, we're going to smooth out some of these, uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll see about smoothing some of these curves. So I'm just, I'm guessing and, and turning the, the uh, number of segments down on some of these, but all right. So that's that. Ah, <laughs> wait, does that mean we have to go redo the intro because nobody heard those applause you gave Tyson? Oh no. Yay. Fix it in post. We'll add this in later. Okay. <laughs> Plenty, more. Plenty more where that came from. No shortage. And I, I wanted to let you know, Tyson, while you're doing that too, Matt did download a whole lot of airplane sounds before we straightened out the whole plane plane thing. So, um, oh. yeah, all the jet sounds just aren't going to, they aren't going to happen. I'm really sorry, Matt, to kind of, you know, rain on your parade. Bunch was... of great clips from the movie Airplane were queued up too, but, uh, you know, <laughs> let's just uh, stick with some some grinding, crunchy noises that... <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> grindy, crunch. You, you say grindy, crunchy, but hand planing is like, it is zen. It is like, yeah, pull up some, uh, you know, really, it's more... See if I can get some foley in the. Uh, well, then it, maybe maybe it's not just not the way I do it is the issue there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that was a little. That was a little uh, visual break for your eyes. Just uh, just turn on the dark screen for just a second so you can relax your eyes. And now we're back at it. Yeah, that's dark <laughs> mode. No problem. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, what is the name of this file again, Tyson? This file? Mm -hmm. Just curious. I can't quite read that at the, the file name at the top of your screen. Well, see, this is the illustrative untitled. Mm. <laughs> it's um, it, it's only fifteen minutes into stream. It is too early to like throw the save out. Like, doesn't that happen an hour in? Shame. Uh, Okay. I, I gotta say, I've had I've had I've had the call out in mass at two minutes in before, so I, I'm feeling like a little bit prejudiced against here. 
Well, you know what? Um, given especially that uh, we crashed three times before we started, that you're you're right on point. <laughs> Nice save. There we go. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, I know any of us uh, who do this are guilty and can relate to, you can really get lost just in the initial sort of like, oh, I tweak this just a little bit and just having fun with all the, the tweaks. But I, Sculpting. Let me, yeah, let me try to move forward a little bit more. A bit. Yeah, we are in Westminster, Colorado, and saw people asking about that in the chat. This is um, sunny Westminster, Colorado. No? It's a beautiful day now. Hello. It? Yesterday we had the uh, tornado warning. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was running to the uh, to the windows to get a look. But, uh, like... yeah, I think we did that backwards. I think when there's a tornado warning, you're supposed to steer clear of things like windows and exterior walls. But um, oh, inward, yeah, inward. Yeah, we, we didn't do that right. But yeah, great day today. The smoke is even kind of relaxed on us, which is nice. Can breathe a nice full breath. Nice, nice, nice foley work. <laughs> I was trying to bring the uh, the realness, the audio, best audio. Ooh, Studio RT, RT Cool is saying they have a hurricane coming. Oh no, that was us. Are you are, <clears throat> are you supposed to go towards or away from exterior walls to hurricane? I don't know the rules for that. From what kind? You just leave. Board it up and get out of there. <laughs> See now, now I, I look at that and I, I, I got what you're going for now. It, it, it's coming together. Okay, yeah. so let let's start putting something together here, and we will start with very simple. Let's start with the blade iron. And let's make it, let's say, two inches wide. Since it's a smaller one, two, maybe 2.25. So so out of curiosity, and because somebody's asking, how much does a custom-made uh, plane like this go for? Um, they're all over the map, but not on the cheap side. <laughs> You, you can get the like some of the most beautiful, artistic, just completely 100% custom made uh, would be 5,000 bucks. Oh, boy. Um, that buys a lot of donuts. Really of beautiful, functional works of art. So, so is there like a pre-order link for this one that you're designing today? Can I... Oh, get in there. And... <laughs> uh, you, you want an early on on this action? I'll give you 5K today. Matt? I like how this is looking. Okay, Matt, <laughs> we, we, we got a deal going. <laughs> yeah, Philip said 7,000 uh, pounds in Scotland is how much... Uh, one's going for over there. So yeah, they, uh, we can get pretty, uh, pretty nice ones of these. 7,000 pounds. That's a heavy hand tool right there. Somebody had to say it. I mean, come on. We're, you, you guys were expecting, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be here all night. Yay. We expected from Jody, but we have higher standards for you. <laughs> I'm filling in. <laughs> All right, 25 is kind of a typical grinding angle on one of these. And then if we take this, and like we said, we are going to tilt this up at 50 degrees. I'm curious, question for Philip, if, if 7,000 pounds, is that a custom new one? Or is that like if you're trying to find a, a, a classic collector? Because these, these are 100, 150 older 
you can find really old planes. I assume that's for a new one, but Yeah, Doug says, uh, high-end commercial, so I know nothing about this, so I'm just going to read out what he says. High-end commercial number three can be found for un around $189. Ah, but infill, so number three, anyway. Yeah. Are, are we talking uh, infill or are we talking... Uh... You also have a couple people, including Doug, asking for a secondary bevel, 30 degree micro bevel, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know not what that means. I do, <laughs> and cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll, we'll, we'll give everybody what they want. Okay. That means we'll even go in here and create a tiny. very tiny arc on this which comes from the grinding wheel oh, better turn our segments down and then yeah the micro bevel is just that it is an extra tiny little thing like that mm. Okay. Okay. Now I know what that is. It was that was missing before. I didn't get it. <laughs> you can ask Mike and anybody. Do they uh, do they put their micro bevel on? How do they do it? Do they use the ruler trick? Do they use you know? That's the only trick. I, that's the only one I know. I'll, I'll be talking out of. Any other uh, bevel tricks out there? Let us know in the chat. <laughs> Jody asks, why do you need a secondary bevel or hollow grind? Is this what people feel like when we start talking about like, Star Wars, <laughs> like or Star Wars and yeah, Marvel movies are not interested because I'm sitting here going, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dcube said he's looking to or considering buying a CNC router for 3,500 euro. Yeah, that'd be a good, good investment. A lot you can do there. What you gonna make with it? <laughs> yeah, what's the make idea? What's plans? the uh, what's the end goal for the CNC? I really feel like there's so many things you can make with a CNC. I think that would be like an awesome thing to have, but I, I also look at those things and I'm like, that takes, that's like a commitment. Like that's, you know, that's a big space you gotta have there. It's like 3D printing where you, you know, you're gonna get it wrong to begin with, you know, try again. And yeah. with 3D printing, you're talking about, you know, a buck, maybe two bucks worth of plastic, whereas, <laughs> CNC machine, you're dealing with the most expensive material in the world, which is wood. Um, yeah, just uh, dumping wood down the toilet. Yeah, that, that would be a rough one. I guess you can start with, well, there really is no cheap wood right now, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like the, the ratty plywood is going for like, what, $70 a sheet, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you buy a CNC, do you get any uh, material? little wood throw it in to sweeten the deal that's what i'd be looking for <laughs> a little something jody said wood prices have dropped Ooh, went down from 80 dollars a sheet to 75. <laughs> that's now that's right. a steal and he also says you can do foam or aluminum that's true i have seen people start out testing foam But I don't know aluminum's. I think aluminum's pretty expensive right now too, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Seems like it would be, but I know nothing. I think the cheapest thing to mill these days would be computer chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear uh, it's really easy to get your hand on high-level video cards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just pure. Like, you just glue some of those together and 
you're off to the races. Why don't you model up a couple of those video cards real quick? <laughs> <laughs> that, sir. I've heard uh, I've heard uh, horror stories about that. It was something. Check out our previous streams if you don't know what we're talking about. You know, we so so when we do this thing around here, the, these these here live streams, um, we do get a lot of good ideas from you guys because we always we tend to throw out, you know, what should we model next? And people always come up with great ideas, and um, you know, we we like to be able to model them all, but obviously there's a limit to how many things we can model, how many times, you know, and we have to kind of mix it up, and we try to do some architecture and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, every once in a while we'll come up with an idea and be like, hey, that would be a cool one. And uh, video card is one that we really thought was going to be neat because, you know, look through the detail on a, a video card. It's all these little pieces. It's really, really fun looking. Turns out when you actually make it, it's just copying the same stupid component 732 times around a flat board. So it, it doesn't actually, it's not quite as fun as, as it seems like it should be. I know Keggy's saying that we're supposed to stop talking about it, but it keeps coming back. I'm I'm haunted by the video card and the Cobra. What can I say? Well, that's a pretty good, uh, you know, hitting percentage. You've been like, you know, you've been doing them every week, and you only have two ones that you're not happy with. Like, it's it's pretty good. That's true. That's true. It, it, well, yeah, of the ones that happened, you know, and I was I was actually thinking about that. How bummed I was that we had that live stream two weeks ago that didn't happen, but. Yeah, I, I don't. I think that's the first time we've just straight up said, "No, we can't do this." So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You broke your streak. Now you got to start all over. Yeah. So that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> Back to square one. Zero days without an incident on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Did we bring that sign over? We had a sign in our previous office that was like zero days since a uh, raptor attack. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Blood dripping down the sign. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you guys use 3ds Max? Um, I'd say there's probably a couple of reasons. One is that uh, we work for Trimble, which makes SketchUp, uh, which is on the screen now, and uh, so that's certainly a reason. But also, you know, I think um, the kind of hand sketching stuff that you see here, the uh, ease of use, you know. Just like any other tool, if you're familiar with it, if you know how to use it well, you can kind of make whatever you want with it. And um, I'll let the other gentlemen speak for themselves. But uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. Also, it's been 15 years since I cracked 3ds Max, so <laughs> I did use it once upon a time, and I uh, used it back in college. And you do not want to see me fumbling around 3ds Max. How about you, Aaron? Ah, uh, it's been a long time. I I did not use it very much either. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say obviously yes. Here on the official SketchUp channel, we tend to use a lot of SketchUp. But uh, that's not to say that's all we use. I mean, I know we're we're a big advocates of using the right tool for the job and using SketchUp as part of an integrated workflow. That's, that's kind of some of our mantras around here. Um, but I will say that when it comes to just hopping in and modeling and making shapes, uh, it's, it's kind of hard for me to get into anything other than SketchUp. I mean, it just, at this point I've spent so much time on it and it's just so easy and quick for me that uh, when I do use other tools, it always seems to be like a step backwards. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Dcube is saying that he was talking about the CNC router. He said that uh, that router could read SketchUp uh, SVG exports. So he could I go straight remember. from SketchUp to the CNC, which is Ooh, nice. That is awesome. That's cool. Let's skip that, that uh, additional cam step. I've heard a lot, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but uh, the people who I've talked to who are using routers, okay, so in the studio, I'm sitting at a little tiny table with my laptop <laughs> behind Matt. And every time I start talking, they look at me, Matt and, and Tyson look towards me and they, they're all, they're looking down on me, guys. That's what's happening right now. 
<laughs> yeah, we're both standing, and you just got your little. I know. I gotta stand up at the mic stand. It's like a um, detention desk. I want to like get a... even. Like, I, I just want to like bring your chair, bring it down small. Like that is a tiny desk. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's really small. I just wanted to have somewhere that I could look at comments and. Yeah. Oh yeah. Anyhow, um, <laughs> I'm bringing one of those old school elementary desks. Like, basically yeah. sitting on the floor really in the corner. He's yeah. all scrunched up in there. It's it's humility. I'm being taught humility right now, I guess. Um, but I was saying a lot of people who I've talked to who are using uh, route or CNC machines are using Faber for SketchUp. So I wasn't sure if that was something uh, DQ had looked into. Faber, it is it's a paid service. I think he has it as a, as an online service, but uh, yeah, I've I've heard good things about it. I haven't used, I don't have a CNC, so I haven't used it myself, but. Uh, had a couple people we work with check it out and really like it. So, mm. so that out there. Eric Schimmelfenig's uh, tool, right? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff. It uh, he does a lot of plywood assemblies, so everything's made in pieces, and that tool automatically sets things where they should be, and then puts them on sheets and helps you export those sheets out to, for cutting. It's it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of, I'm going to try to find, because you did an extension inspection on it, right? Yeah, I so did. I'll yeah, uh, find that video and drop it in the chat. And one of the nice things about it, so you, there's there's multiple ways to get out of SketchUp into something like a CNC. Um, but when you do, often you have to manually, you want to take your thing that you've modeled, put it down into the, the sheets that are going to get cut out. And one of the things that's nice about Faber, from what I've seen, I haven't used it, that extensively is like it will predict that for you so it'll take your whole model in all the groups and components and just lay it down um it is pretty cool it's pretty cool because mm -hmm. anybody who's done that before that's probably the most time consuming well that and setting the spaces between the parts so everything inter intersects correctly and i think it helps with that right. too yeah we um i believe if i look at these is this a solid? Does this show up? No. This one is. This one is not for some reason. I think I know why. Um, we could use uh, solid tools to cut these shapes out. I'll just do it the old school way of uh, intersect with model. See what we can get with that. I'm gonna go into this group. Um, I I don't know about you, Aaron. I I like sometimes to leave them as separate groups, and uh, and then merge the results back together later on. Sometimes it helps. Yeah. Anytime I hop into something like this too, I usually like you did right there. Make a copy of it also. So if things go horribly wrong, <laughs> I can always back up and and give another try at it. So. That's that's a yeah that's something I do. Oh, and make sure you're working with groups and not components because it doesn't help making a copy if you made it a component. No. And one of the nice things about this is um, so if we move this aside for a second, and it, it, one of the things that's helpful is each of these I'm moving it in a in a definite definite increment. For me, I'm just moving it five inches, and these are twenty inches from here and ten inches from here. So whatever unit of measurement you're, you're working in, once you start like assembling pieces that sort of have reference together, but you want to work with them off to the side, it's nice because I can just move this back five inches and it's exactly where I need it to be. So, mm -hmm. But working with groups means sometimes, depending on the complexity of the stuff you're intersecting, you have to go in and like delete stuff out but because this was a group, that, that makes it super easy to delete out extra geometry from there. And I also need to get this aspect of it. So let's move another copy over five inches. This time I'll select the other group and intersect with model.
I like how Tyson is pretending his plane is his 3D mouse over on the side there. <laughs> got a similar little uh, fuck handle thing. Yeah, got that knob there. I think there's okay. So what if we created a mouse that sort of like was was like this? I mean, like I don't know how usable it'd be, but could we create a usable one that's like a super novelty <laughs> woodworker's mouse? Wouldn't that just take chunks out of the mouse pad every time you moved it? Uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, well, or I'm blade. sorry, I'm sorry. You can retract Shavings. the blade. Well, I would think if it was a novelty mouse, you wouldn't have a blade at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is a bad idea. I think that could be a lot of fun. No, it's got to be usable. It can't just be a mouse. It has to be okay. plane and mouse. Sorry. To that say. makes sense. Yeah. Then you would have to retract the blade. So Tyson, just just curious, was there a particular reason? Was it just to show the workflow of using Intersect as opposed to solid tools? It was just was this just a, a, a teaching moment? It was. Um, uh, I will say it was both. In that, I, I was I was looking at it kind of as a teaching moment, um, particularly sometimes I'll get a little I. I thought about doing this project in the web version, mm -hmm. um, especially since that's sort of what we give out there. At, you know, both Shop and SketchUp Free are our web versions, and they get used by hobbyists. So I thought maybe we'll do this, but we're going to do a few things that requires plugins, and the web version does not su support plugins. Um, the SketchUp Shop does have solid uh, tools, though. But yeah, I, I, it was more of a, you can do this in any version of SketchUp. Everything we've done, web version, any version. Got it. Um, we have not done anything that crazy special yet. Um, hmm. I don't know. I think I'd have to set, I, I'm looking at it. I think I'd have to set this up a little bit differently to do actually a, solid tool subtraction too. So sometimes um, like when you get into solid tools, I don't know about you, but again, you do have to sort of think about the solids and subtracting mm -hmm. and intersect with model just intersects everything. And then you're like, okay, I can think my way through what I need to get rid of. And I, so sometimes it's just me and my deficient mental state, not able to, well, yeah. No, I don't think it's that. Planet Sometimes head. you just got to go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Go for it and see what happens. Well, there's that, that, that's the theory of thinking and modeling as opposed to uh, the alternate version, which is I like to call clicky clicky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking this, though. I mean, that anytime you see a model with these nice, smooth, uh, Curves like that in 3D space, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. I think that that makes for a pretty uh, unique model, and and it and it comes into that thing too. You know where we hear that all the time. Well, you know that's not what SketchUp's for. That's not how SketchUp works. SketchUp doesn't do that. And uh, those are some of my favorite models to create. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just uh, you know it's like a planning thing. You just kind of gotta have the right mindset that. Um... Just do it a little bit differently yeah, I and mean, you have to kind of think about it a little bit beforehand but um yeah look what you can do look at it go look at it go whoa okay so we've got this piece of it let's move this back i don't know let's say 20 inches let's make that 30. I'm notorious about to like at this point we've, you know, but I think this, for me, this is the difference between like what you were describing, sort of a clicky click, which I will also call a design model where I'm saying I could go back at this point and fairly easily refine this curve by shrinking this down and do it and then go, you know, proceed forward. Whereas, um, so you're sort of leaving yourself some ability to, to backtrack and then move forward again. So I'm guilty of leaving a lot of baggage in my models. 
Well, I think in in something like this, which, like you said, is is a a design model. This isn't, um, you know, working off of a plan. You're not working off an image. You're actually creating something and making those shapes as you go. I think this is kind of the way it should go. This is the way I would expect it to go is, you know, things are going to change and leaving those previous iterations on the screen and available for change as you go through is kind of an important part of that because I know I've done that when I was um, younger and dumber where I went through and, you know, made a commitment, made a change, saved it, and then realized I didn't want to do that. And then <laughs> had to go back and unmodel something or remodel. And that's, that's, uh, that's a learning experience, I guess we'd call that. <laughs> Pain in the dupa. <laughs> that's the <Maybe>. one. <laughs> what not to do by Aaron. All righty, let's see what we got here. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's something. In case you all were wondering, we got that. I mean, can we follow that up with like nails on chalkboard or something? <laughs> <laughs> like as long as we're <laughs> that's what we... going that way. I don't have much, anything much more annoying than that, unfortunately. But Did anybody know the history of that sound? Like, was that like just purely organically the sound? I don't know why. It's so awful. Yeah. Yeah. Why did it have to be like that? All right. So that's the mouth. Opening. It would be cool if you could call AOL up and like customize your own, you know, <laughs> you know your ring back tone. You guys ever have those? Like the when somebody called you, that's what they would hear waiting for you to pick up the phone. I don't remember this. Oh, so there's, yeah, songs, you know, you'd see like commercials for like ringback tones, text this number and then get, um, it was very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so, in summary, bad thing. <laughs> This is one of the things that makes infill planes <clears throat> uh, a little bit unique is and that some people think uh, they prefer is that you have all of this support for the plane which hopefully reduces um, chatter and makes them more stable for dealing with uh, squirrely grain mm, some good nomenclature there now you'll have people who argue that a well set up regular plane works just as fine so it's sort of a it, it's not a Ford Chevy, you know, it's really, but just to be clear, that's, you know, it's not hard science, depending on who you ask. So what are your thoughts? I've never used one. Ooh. Okay. But I think they're awful pretty. That's my <laughs> thoughts. So the, the, I got to say, this is one of, this has always been one of my favorite parts of using 3D modeling software, specifically SketchUp is... I can model things that I can't have in real life. <laughs> I can pretend to have them. And uh, that's what Tice is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Well, and then one, and then you can 3D print it and then you can have it. Yeah. You're not the real deal, but. Yeah, I, I had a lot of, uh, you know, dream houses. I've modeled four or five awesome houses that well, I won't ever have them. Um, but yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Millennium Falcon. Ah. That was awesome. Then you did get one in real life That's and gave true. it away. I got I got a generic one. That was that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
you guys have any interest in going to the what is the Disneyland uh, one called? The uh, oh, Galaxy's, yeah. Edge, Galaxy's or, Edge. Yeah, because they have yeah. like, the full size Falcon over there, right? Yeah, you can go ride around in it. Well, you can ride yeah. around in it. What do you mean? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a no. It's like a it's a ride. It's a theme ride. Oh, okay. Which is cool. Yeah. I actually, saw so we were talking about when we did the the haunted mansion. We were talking about that behind the attraction show on Disney Plus, and that's one of the rides they show oh, is uh, how they go about getting people to walk to board the Millennium Falcon, think they're walking into the cockpit and taking the ride when they're like, you know, you got to get hundreds of people through there a day. And how do you do that when yeah. there's, you know, the cockpit for four? So they, <laughs> they showed like this carousel that they have of like the way that you go in and you think you're walking up to it, but you're actually walking to the back. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. They do some amazing design work uh, at the Disney parks. Mm, that's super cool. I have to say my uh, park of choice, attraction park, or whatever you want to call it, is uh, got a soft spot for Six Flags because uh, when I was a kid, I like grew up near Six Flags, Great America, in Gurney, Illinois. Mm. Um, and so I had the season passes a couple of years and like went every day, you know, um, right? Just know every single in and out of every ride and stuff. Um, but I love a Six Flags, you know. Maybe not as much prestige as a Disney, you know, with, yeah, that much, like, design going into the, uh, like, the attractions and, you know, experience part of it. But, uh, you know, they got Raging Bull. That's something. Yeah. American Eagle. I think that was... Yeah. Oh, American Eagle. Oh, and then uh, in Fright Fest in the fall, then they, they do the backwards. They put the cars, because it's one of those, like, old oh. wooden ones that have the two cars, so they put them backwards. Yeah, it's pretty cool. No, I, I think I think Six Flags got a place, you know, as a, as a thrill ride as opposed to a theme park where, you know, when you go into the Disney parks, they're awesome, but everything is Disney Thematic. themed. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is cool, but you don't get the same rush as you do going like, yeah, some crazy roller coaster that, goes at like 3g or whatever yeah <laughs> it's a different experience for yeah yeah everybody likes different stuff but that, I, I definitely uh enjoy that too mm -hmm. yeah six as far as six flags goes is like this is southwest territory and they just have like the buildings are a little bit different <laughs> like, but everything else and is we give it a thing. shot <laughs> So Tyson, I'm I'm thinking this is pretty simple. Why don't we this you should just get done with this and then go build it in real life and charge seven thousand dollars for it? Isn't that how this works? I think so. All right. Can we can we get everybody out there to line up That's right. uh, with the orders? All right, guys, we're gonna need a thirty five hundred dollar deposit from each of you, and Tyson's gonna bang these out this weekend. <laughs> I think so, you can send money on YouTube now, can't you? <laughs> Send it in. Just, so just to clarify, Tyson. These you got three pieces right now. Obviously, the metal blade is that rectangular piece in the middle. The handle is probably carved out of wood. What is that body? The bottom part is that metal also, or is that wood, or what is that piece? It is metal. Okay. And um, what will typically happen if you're going to build one of these is that these are different parts, and the curve on this makes it. You can you can make these flat parallel mm -hmm. sides right by all means and many people do um the curve on this makes is where i think you'll see some of the really expensive ones because they will actually they'll pin and then peen which is like hit it with a metal hammer and then spread the metal into it and or they'll actually create dovetails on these but yeah so you'll have three pieces of metal that are joined together very securely to make this base that's awesome wow and what what is the base called is there a special name for it or uh base? help out there i, I think doug I stevens is calling it the soul the soul soul okay that sounds good 
S O L E, just so we keep it all safe. It's not the soul. It's the soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the soul of the hand plane would probably be the handle. The blade? Maybe the blade. That's what it does, right? It yeah. Cuts and shaves and stuff. And I don't know. I'm gonna probably, probably stop talking about things I have no nothing about. I buy a blade. I buy a blade. It <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you get if you get a, a custom made blue steel Japanese blade, it probably is the soul. Mm, yeah, a lot of heart and soul put into it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Keggy got to the bottom of the modem noise here. Oh, the modem noise is because of the limitations of the frequency range in a copper wire. Um, so there's many many different noises that they had to create to create the analog conversion from digital. I'm not going to say he's wrong. There you go. Boom. So maybe, and uh, this is radio talk, but uh, maybe instead of frequency modulation, they had to go with amplitude modulation. Whoa. Which I am a, I don't, actually, I don't even listen to the radio anymore. Do you guys ever have the radio on? Like, when's the last time you actually listened to, like, a radio station on the broadcast waves? Uh, okay, I got to say this. Our car, which is a, a newer car, has a radio that turns on every time you start it. Like, so <laughs> okay. even if you turned it off last time you were in it, when you start the car, it kicks on the radio. So I've listened to the radio every morning that I drive, and it irritates me. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to say, like, the, th the thing that gets me about the radio is, like, 80, 75, 80% commercials. Like, right. That's really all you get to listen to. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that's why I get bugged by it. Yeah, fewer listeners you get, the more ads you have to put to get the same number of people. If that's true, then how come YouTube is, like, going up on the ad presence, but they seem to be going up on... Yeah. Can I say, are point. we... We're, I, I, I'm just like a dot on my forehead right now. <laughs> yeah, on YouTube, and we're gonna get. We don't monetize or anything, so it's it's okay. That's true. Although now they have the right to put ads on all of our videos, right? Yeah, that's uh. That's it's st it's still a setting right now, but I think they reserve the right to do whatever they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, for now, we remain ad-free for you at home. That's right. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Let us know if you see an ad on one of our videos, and we'll, we'll contact Mr. Tube and get to the bottom of it. I actually did go into our YouTube settings this last week and turned off um, Allow Ads, and I also turned on the custom channel name so you can go to youtube.com forward slash sketchup and get here as opposed to typing in youtube.com slash cxz dash whatever that was before wait when did you change it like two days ago i've been doing that for months really i'm doing it for years honestly wow it's because it was turned off our custom oh, wow. our custom yeah huh maybe it recently know. got sure it shut off then hmm, weird because i went and was surprised that it was turned off yeah. Weird. Thank you for having us, YouTube. <laughs> we love you, really. <laughs> we actually do, but we still be sarcastic. <laughs> the overwhelming volume of every two-minute ad. Anyway. Yeah, sometimes they can get a little often, but... Uh... We love we the love ads, you. don't we, folks? We love you. <clears throat> um, I didn't create a shape for this front tote area, so I'll just do that real quick, and then we'll see what we can do with that. Nice. I like it. Yeah, Nerman said he's listening to the radio in the car. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Unlike Aaron's car, my car, it does turn on the radio first, but then it like auto connects to Bluetooth, you know, which means 
that it plays the first song in my library every single time, which is its own version of annoyance. But um, <laughs> just listen to A Punk by Vampire Weekend for the first two minutes of my drive every day. Is that because that starts with A? Is that why? Yeah, A hyphen. So there it's like go. the earliest. It's even earlier than Aaron. That's... Which normally, alphabetical order, you're front of the line. Front yeah, of the I get a lot of butt dials. <laughs> <laughs> First up. <laughs> All righty. What else we got? Honestly, don't really have too many uh, sound effects, but oh, here we go. Here, here's maybe an annoying one. Hmm. Ah! Ah, I like that one. <laughs> are you are you experimenting? Are you sculpting right now, Tyson? Is this just like considerations for the? Wait, wait, wait. wait is it? Is this? The nose of the plane, the toe, the heel, the toad. There is a well. Frog. I know on this it's called a tote. Tote. Dang it. Um. Or you know, a knob. But I don't know if that it's if it's the exact same on an infill. But yeah. So. But um, yeah, uh, this is another one of those areas where you get to customize a lot of how you want this, and if you you want something that you can grab with your entire sort of palm or just you know your thumb mm -hmm. but let's it's looking cool yeah let's not get too wrapped up in this and that is okay yeah jody sometimes the goal is annoying sounds you got to break it up all three of us have such lovely you know assonant voices or whatever um I don't even know what that means. I'm not asking it. You're <laughs> asking it. <laughs> uh, let's look it up. Matt's <laughs> dropping language bombs on us here. Maybe. Could, Maybe. could be a made-up word. I don't, you know. Or it could be so common and uh, just that ignorant. Could be an insult. We don't really know. <laughs> it says resemblance of sounds. So our voices are resembling sounds? Yeah, I resemble that <laughs> remark. Seems seems true. I mean, I can't see my voice, so I can't say what it resembles, but it seems like sounds is the right thing. Yeah, is that only for uh what's the what's the word of the thing where you can uh you can see sounds or like different sounds have different tastes or like Synesthesia. Whoa. Synesthesia. You say so, like you, you're just blowing my mind right now. Oh gosh, we're going yeah. into vocabulary lesson here. <laughs> I don't care for that. I prefer that over math any day. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. Looking cool. Mm hmm I like it. So we do need to create. I think this is still called maybe I don't know if it's called a frog on a info plane too. But anyway, piece that holds this plane iron in. And what space do we have? Doug has called out that uh, it is looking more and more like a coffin infill. Thank you, Doug. That's and and Lars wants to know where your tablet is. Oh, I'm you're, sorry. You're traveling today. You're traveling it's true. Late. We're in the office, and that is my home setup. So, those of you who use a tablet know you have to be multilingual. <laughs> What's the word for that, Matt? Multi-capable? Multi... Yeah. Multi-input device? What is that? 
It's not ambidextrous. That means two different hands. Ambi interface soul facial. Mm. <laughs> I think multi's probably it. More than one. Mm -hmm. Multi input. Multi yeah. I don't know. Yeah, multi inputter. Yeah. Multi input capable. Multi into capable. Say that. It's an input capable. Oh, but, uh, that, that I thought it was, I thought it was cool. <laughs> into capable. Sounds sounds fancy. <laughs> Just had some new people show up. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. So if you're new, we'll give you a quick uh, preview. We're doing a, a sort of specific type of hand plane today called an infill plane. And this one is referred to as a coffin plane because of the curving sides of it and the shape. And right now, we're figuring out what the next piece is going to look like. And, we're, and a lot of this, we're just doing in profile first, um, kind of making it up as we go. But this one is going to look something like this. I just say that's a good looking frog. <laughs> is it right? Did I use it? Is that is it the frog? I I don't know. So yes. Okay. I want to sound, sound smart somebody, for just a second. Somebody can come in. So Lars is saying you can't imagine using a tablet. I'm assuming you're saying for SketchUp, um, and I understand where that sentiment comes from. I remember, <laughs> I've. Uh, I learned to use a tablet for some videos specifically. <laughs> and uh, there's a point at which it's it's pretty easy to get to the point where I won't say I was as comfortable as using a mouse, but I got more comfortable with it with, with a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of just got to force yourself through the initial like learning phase. Once you get a little bit of the muscle memory. Yeah, that definitely easier. helps. It's kind of like using a 3D mouse for the first time. You got to force yourself to do it. Give yourself a project that you don't have to have done right now. Mm -hmm. Deadlines are terrible ways to learn. Some people think that's a motivating factor, <laughs> but I'll say it. I just, I think it adds stress to it and you shouldn't do it. But uh, yeah, a little bit of practice. You need yeah. to do. It reminds me of uh, pushing Mongo. You guys ever skateboard before? So like yeah. when you when you're on a skateboard, you know you gotta unless you have one of the electronic ones that people have nowadays, you just have a little controller that makes you go. You don't even have to push. But in order to push, you know normally you have to take one foot off and then mm -hmm. push on the ground. But uh, what a lot of beginners do, and I think because it's just like maybe more natural, is to keep their back foot mm -hmm. on the board because normally you want to keep your front foot on the board and then push with your back foot. But they keep their back foot on the board and push with their front foot. And uh, yeah, it just looks goofy. It does. It looks like you're gonna fall over. I remember <laughs> yeah. I worked at a, uh, a skate park for a while and there's just a handful of kids. They were all younger kids mm -hmm. came in and they would all do that. Like they would kick backwards. And I'm just like, I, don't, I, I tried it and it didn't, it didn't work for me. Yeah. Like, like not, not because I wanted to do it, but like, can I do it? Am I capable of that? And that's, that's hard to do. Change your center of gravity on something with wheels. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it definitely looks weird and feels weird. And also, yeah, you have less control over the board as well. But anyways, yeah. So I forced myself just one day to only do it the, you know, the quote unquote correct way. And then once you start doing that, you just, that's what you do now. There you go. So done and done did you uh did you follow the skateboarding in the olympics uh i watched a little bit of it but i didn't like follow the entire competition but yeah i feel like people have just gotten 
like back in my day, you know, there was some technical stuff going on and then there was some like bigger stuff going on. And then now everyone just does the most insane tricks down the mo the biggest stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I just, it just boggles my mind. It's like, I couldn't even imagine doing this in like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, much less doing it in actual <laughs> real life. Yeah, people have progressed insanely. Did you make a copy of your cutter, Tyson? Make a copy? <clears throat> Over here to the other side. Isn't this going to be used on the other side too? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to get lazy and do this and do this. And then just mirror the actual piece afterwards. That works. Nice. I was laughing. Um, so consoles these days, Xbox, um, PlayStation stuff, they got these services, right, where you can just pay and then access a, this big library of games. I mm -hmm. forget what it's called. Mm -hmm. But we got on a like three month version of that, and one of the games my kids downloaded was this like skateboarding game, and so they're playing along and doing all sorts of stuff. And like you say, you know, crazy, amazing, amazing, like unrealistic in world life stuff. <laughs> yeah. But then at one point, they like there's literally this level where you're supposed to go up on on this building, and then you go down, you you slide down on one of sort of the arcing structural elements mm -hmm. and you literally jump a shark <laughs> you jump a shark in the game that's awesome i was just cracking up and they don't know what that means and i like no context but <laughs> they get over that they actually put that in there you jump a shark yeah that's hilarious uh philip in the chat has a recommendation for a sound effect from you matt Shave. <laughs> <laughs> a fine save. <laughs> you can't compliment him before he does it. <laughs> oh wait, didn't you? I, I, did, you I just did. saved. I just saved. Right. Thank you. Got the quick draw hand. Let, let, let faster, me faster than. Uh, just, uh, I'm watching on the delay still. Barry, Ove, good to see you. Um, D-Cube said um, uh, they just modeled a big plaza with fountains using the same workflow that Tyson's using right now. How so? Tell us more. Do tell. Yeah, is that with like having the multiple kind of iterations of it spaced uh, apart so that you can go back if you need to or intersect if you need to or... Just while we're waiting for that reply, I just got to think, say that's that's one of the cool things. That one of the things I like best about SketchUp is that you can go, oh, I just modeled a plaza with fountains, and I use the same workflow as you're using to create a hand plane. I mean, that's that's one of the pieces that I like about SketchUp is the that functionality. You can do so many different things with the same set of tools. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about us when I say a set of tools either. Come on. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Keggy points out Tyson doesn't have the uh, key logger thing or the whatever Ooh. it is, keystroke uh, thing that Aaron has set up. Maybe next time we'll get that uh, get that rocking. What? What am I missing? Just uh, it's like a little readout on the bottom of the screen that shows all the keys. So for keyboard shortcuts. And stuff. So let let me tell you why I don't have that. Yeah. And it's not a good reason. It's not going to be helpful. I I think Arc is the only default shortcut that I have left. I have obliterated all of the default shortcuts for various reasons. And it's funny somebody brought up 3ds Max early because 
one of my original things and that like still has a little bit of legacy is like keyboard shortcuts from Max because I, I learned that first. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it, w it wouldn't be helpful when, uh, when I type B for push pull. <laughs> Who does that? Yeah, it'd be confusing. Your key logger's broken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why for, you know, better or worse, that's, that's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd always have to explain it every time new people showed up. <laughs> or just put a disclaimer on the screen. That's all we'll have to do. We have a key up there. A translator. <laughs> uh, DQ was saying for the fountain thing that uh, they were using intersecting solid tools and a lot of different copies. Uh, yeah, it, it just works. Works across the board, like you were saying, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Keggy just swore and said, why don't you just reset your shortcuts? Why don't I reset them? Whoa. You see Tyson's face just now? That's why. Dang, <laughs> 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 sir. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and we've all done that. Well, especially people. It's better now, but it used to be that SketchUp wouldn't bring all your presets over and you'd you have to go through and reset your shortcuts on new versions. And there's always that moment of, oh no, this doesn't work anymore. This new version doesn't have this command. And it's just that, no, you didn't reset your shortcuts right, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get the new version in there and then you're like, oh my goodness, May. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is that from? That sounds so familiar. <laughs> uh, I think it was in the Tour de France this year. There was like a huge crash. Is it that one? Because, yeah, somebody stepped out in front with like a sign, you know? That was crazy. Did you see that? No, I miss. I missed that. It was like, whatever, 70 people were involved or something like that. It was a huge crash. Yeah. Yikes. Um, and that's from the announcer. Like everybody right should just take a break right now and go look that up. It was right at the beginning of that huge pack, and this, I mean, like, she, uh, the people crowd right up to the, the side of it, and that's the nature of it, but yeah. She was getting, like, a picture taken, she it was, looks like. She turned around, was getting, like, a picture, and this rider just caught the edge of her sign. He couldn't save it. He went down, and everybody behind him, mm -hmm. massive crash. I'll try to find the... Uh, you know, um, I, I haven't, I haven't... Uh... Fallen off a bike in many, many years. It's been, you know, probably childhood or something. But I seem to remember it being a painful situation just when you're doing it by yourself. I can't imagine doing that with dozens of other riders, especially going at pro speeds like that. That's got to be rough. Yeah. Nope. Oh. <laughs> um... Well, Matt's looking that up. I, I I had the reaction, you know. Let's just um, uh, stupid reaction of come on, who was who was it, Keggy or somebody like what? You don't like my shortcuts? Let's let's have a model off. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> I've made that mistake in the past, and I never win, so I I know not to do that. <laughs> I think I honestly think so many people. Um, in the SketchUp world, who are out there uh, not posing as SketchUp users, but like using it in real life, which is bury us. <laughs> it's probably true. You know, that's that's what uh, that's one of the things that 3D Basecamp brings is oh, yeah. the ability to actually call people out and challenge them and model right along them with our SketchUp shootout. So, um, and here's the here's the cool part, guys. If you come to 3D Basecamp and you call out Tyson. Everybody models on the same computer without custom shortcuts. <laughs> yeah. So if you're used to default <laughs> shortcuts and you call Tyson out, you have the leg up. So, um, shut yeah. up, Aaron. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> did you have you have you been called out at any of those when you when you've at base camps? Yes, by you? Christina Inneroth. Oh, and um. 
I'm sure she beat me. <laughs> but that's it. I think that's it. I, I mean, until now, I mean, I was on the voice of a lot of, of a lot of our stuff, but I was never on a face of it. So I, I didn't mm -hmm. have any notoriety or Ooh. like nobody, you know, so I could hide, but hide in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it guys. Next 3d base camp. Tyson's <sighs> looking for challengers. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> or just fans, you know, paparazzi, anybody. If you see them out on the street, you got to go ask for an <laughs> autograph or something. Picture. If you want Mr. SketchUp, right, there's only one of us in this room that has a title. It's Aaron. <laughs> That's right. No, Find I, him. I did, uh, I did get uh, called out. I think, Cotty, I think. Because the way we're doing, uh, so those of you who are not familiar, um, the way that this thing called the SketchUp Shootout works is we have two computers set up side by side, and they're both connected to big monitors. And two people will get up, one on each computer, and they'll both be given a separate prompt. So usually we try to shoot for, you know, models that can be modeled pretty quickly, you know, less than a minute. So you get like a lamp and, uh, I don't know, I'm totally blanking. A chair or yeah, a desk some, or something you can do pretty quick. Submarine. Yeah, and uh, usually what happens, and the rules vary. They're they're a little bit different every time. We try to keep it fun and you know mix up the rules based on where we're at, that kind of thing. But what generally happens is, uh, you know, you can go up in pairs or you can go up as one person, call out a second person, and uh, usually that's the way it works out. We've also done it where people just stood in line and you're going up against whoever was next in line. But uh, last 2018, I was emceeing the, that event. So I was actually standing on stage, giving people their prompts, and then, you know, just kind of going back and forth. And, oh, he's modeling this shape. He's modeling this shape, you know. And whoever the audience yells out what they're modeling first is the one who wins. And Cadi came up. I think it was Cadi from our forum came up. And uh, I said, did you want to call somebody out? And he just kind of shrugs his shoulder and goes, well, you <laughs> busted <laughs> and i was i honestly was not expecting that to happen i wasn't so uh we had to speaking of eric shemelton you were just talking about faber mm -hmm. he came up and emceed uh our our shootout <laughs> um but it was, it was fun it was a good time and every and it's all it's all real super fun and i'm honestly in general not a very competitive person i don't really like competition that much but it's it's always fun to get up and do that because because i won that's that was why i was fun <laughs> oh you did you conquered you <laughs> i did i can't remember we had weird prompts i think i had to draw a bird or something it was, oh wow that's tough yeah or he did somebody had to draw a bird um but yeah it was uh it was fun <laughs> one of the many uh attractions that you'll find at 3d base camp in vancouver british columbia canada September 26th to 30th. To, to, hold on, 26, 27, 28, 29. Yep, 30th. 30th, 2022, next year, not this year. So yeah, 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com. You can find more information about that. Kegification is wondering if uh, you'll show up with any wooden swords at base camp, Tyson. As giveaways, that's what he's looking for. Or maybe to sell. You can set up a booth in the vendor hall. I could. We were joking about going over the weekend and cranking some of these out. But I have some of those. That could be a thing. I have... Uh, he is referring to my hobby of... Uh, I, ha I do make some, some wooden swords. Yeah. You guys can check out Geek's Wood Shop on YouTube and see Tyson uh, using that. Do you, how, how often do you implore or employ SketchUp in your hobby wood design? Every project. That was the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Um, <laughs> does that count? <laughs> correct. Now we're just gonna. <clears throat> uh, 
Well, that is the basic pieces. That's uh, so let's let's do some shaping on this handle, but that's it. That's yeah, that's looking really nice. That's uh, who was it, Keggy? Who was asking? Who wanted the swords? Yeah, yeah, yep. Well, you got to specify what kind. I mean, I make all kinds. I mean, if we want to get nerdy up in here, <laughs> like, didn't we already like way over past our quotient of like geek nerdy? <laughs> we haven't got too deep in any one thing today. So I mean, they they brought up micro bevels on <laughs> plain iron. Yeah, there's some there's some some plain geekery, <laughs> but that's thematic. That's on topic. All right, that is true. That's allowed. <laughs> sanctioned by the courts so so i'm not saying you have to go any further but if you were going to go add more to this plane tyson what would what would be the next thing so i think what we're going to try to do um, is to add some shaping to the handle here to the wood aspects of the plane nice um the rest of this actually is, is fairly accurate to what it what it might be in in life mm -hmm. Um, but let's try that and, and explore a few methods to do that. So this is a component. So I'm going to make a unique copy. Actually, let's move that. And kind of like the other stuff, let's just start by creating a little bit of guidelines for us. So turn perspective off. See, who has P for push-pull? P is for perspective. Fight me. Who toggles perspective? <laughs> you don't? Never. <laughs> Wait, if you, if you need to get a orthographic side view to draw something. Oh, I'll do that, but not often enough to assign a shortcut key. I, I'm living large in 3D. No kidding. Living large in sub menus, drop downs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, somebody else who doesn't toggle perspective is our friend Eric because he only works in orthographic view. It makes me crazy. Oh, some people. That's a shame. That is not okay. It's not like, what, why are you using SketchUp? <laughs> yeah, stick to layout if you only want to. <laughs> that said, he, he makes much prettier SketchUp models than I do. So, I mean. Uh, Nerman says you could go with the uh, the new Fredo corner plugin and use different radius for the inner part of the handle, perhaps. Are you planning on using extensions for the for the curves in the handle? Um, yes, I was going to. We've got we've got a little bit of time. I was going to try and show three methods, but nice. Um, what was the suggestion? Because that might be one that I haven't... Fredo Corner. Oh. The, I think the issue you'd run into with Fredo Corner is the changes you're going to want to have to that bevel, right? Because they're going to be... They're not going to be consistent. It's not going to always be a quarter circle bevel as you move up and down the handle. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we've got this. What's my offset? Are there other tools you can do changing bevels as it goes along the path? I, I don't want to step on Tyson's plan at all, but um, I, I can think of a way or two that I would go about it. But I don't, like I said, we'll let, mm -hmm. let Tyson show what he's gotten planned first, and then uh, we can review options after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that uh, I hope will get Aaron's instant approval is that we will start by just some... Stitching. 
Yay! Yay! <laughs> so sad. So That's lit. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's lit. That's lit. That's lit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. The crowd goes wild for hand stitching. <laughs> Always. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to save some of these maybe for later. Otherwise. Okay. Hand stitching. This is, uh, this is where we can, uh, you know, go off and, and, and look up that YouTube, that, uh, uh, Tour de France crash. <laughs> you don't seem to have a great deal of confidence. But uh, hand stitching is always, in my book, a good sort of backup when you're not sure. And especially when you're like, you know, I just need a general idea of what this is going to end up being. I just, I know I've said this before, but I just find it just calm and enjoyable and generally pretty easy on the uh on the brain and it's definitely one of those things where you get done and you're like i made that i didn't use an extension i didn't loft i went through and drew that but <laughs> having said that yeah it's a lot of drawing single lines so you know potential tar carpal tunnel but Practice your mouse accuracy. There you go. There's Matt always learning, always practicing. <laughs> you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. That's right. That's why I stitch everything. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this is, uh, I, it's also nice. Um, just to be like, again, this is one of those things It should be, I hope obvious, but if you're using the web version of SketchUp, it doesn't have plugins, you're not helpless. That is very true. Yeah. Yeah. You can still get stuff done. We're going to get to the point maybe where we have like certain sound effects or certain things for certain methods. Like if you... <laughs> a theme song for... If you pull and scale and you're like doing this thing I was doing earlier to create the, the thumb screw. Like, yeah, like, okay. A specific song plays. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> I think, I think in the very least, Tyson, we need uh, batting songs. So, you know, when, oh, we, when we step yeah. up, we have our own theme songs at the beginning based on who's presenting. That makes sense to me. Give you a little pump up too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was probably pretty loud on the music end. So uh, sorry to all you headphone users. <laughs> All right, we're almost there. But it is Friday, so of any day to have loud music, Friday's the day for it. Look at that. Okay. Nice. It's like the it's intro to Natalie and Bruglia's uh, song. What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> what I'm trying to think of here. Like, I, but I had this brief thing like, wait, wait, are we, are we queuing up? Um, this is your uh... torn. That's <laughs> I, I'm a '90s. I, I I grew up in the '90s. That's, I know that one. So a question did come in: uh, Is there a way to show the vertices as you're doing that stitching? Um, Interesting. So it is possible to turn on endpoints. That it could be part of your style. I don't like that. I I don't like the look of that. 
if I'm stitching like this, sometimes I'll turn on hidden geometry like Tyson had on there a second ago, and that will at least show the end points um, or show where the, where the edges end. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the only other option, there's not a way to say like highlight vertices. You can turn on show those end points, but really depends how you feel about seeing those because they're not really points. They're more just like the end of the line gets fatter. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I think once you get used to this sort of thing, you get used to, you get so comfortable with the green, the cyan or blue midpoint mm -hmm. that you, you start to be able to know where that next one is going to be. So uh, you, you get pretty comfortable finding that without any hints. But then again, it's real uh, it, and, and definitely sometimes turn this on for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it helps if you have those regular arcs like you had in the bulk of the handle. Where it gets tricky is like at the top and the bottom where you had two yeah. non-matching arcs connecting. So you have more points on the outside arc than you have on the inside arc. Um, so that's a little more work. But uh, there's also not a right or wrong way to do that. That's kind of however you want to make that mesh. But once we have this, one at least one mesh... Um, and maybe I created, let me hide this for a moment and see if I, for some reason, it's treating this as two, but um, once I've hidden or softened those edges, I can treat this sort of as one surface, make a copy, um, mirror it with scale or your preferred mirror method, then move it back in place and should be that it actually will break these surfaces up. It did. So now, and, and okay, so here's a good point. It didn't appear, so I'm gonna draw that edge in, make sure it does. But now if I erase those, I've got that surface on both sides. And, and if you were, um, cause the suggestion to like Fredo's corner tool is amazing. But in this case, because I wanted these curves to sort of level out into this base here and up here, that's a case where the, you know, the, the Fredo's corners wouldn't resolve like that. Mm -hmm. You could bring it down part. You could pull that down to the last arc and then just hand stitch there too, though, right? So that's a good point. You could, you could do a hybrid there. Yeah, if you were to like start a certain say spot. do about that much with the thing and then right. stitch the rest, that'd be a good method. That's an option. I mean, for me, I I find that I end up playing around with that so much, it's probably quicker for me just to hand stitch, click back and forth real quick rather than set it up, grab the lines, make the right number of segments and all that stuff but it depends it, each use case is different of course for modeling yeah. different things um so we stitched this i'm gonna take this uh this is just an easy way to select these edges and show a different method copy those paste in place and move that off say by inches because that's these days um and then delete this so if we had gone through this I, i'm i'm basically doing the same thing as if i had gone through and selected these edges which are now broken so make it harder to select but that's why we just grab the surface and get the edges that way um this time i'm going to take this group it and we're going to use soap skin bubble to create the mesh. So this is plugin. We're going into plugin, but soap skin is free. It's pretty cool. And before I do this, I'm actually going to scale it up. Let's say 10% just to get kind of better results. Most of us know if you get really small details in SketchUp, it can start to be a little wonky. That was, that was 10 times, not 10%, right? Uh, 
it was just 10 X. Yes. yes. Right. Um, so with that in, I will hit soap skin over here. And I'm going to, the number of divisions, I'll turn that up, let's say 30. So we get more detail and then hit enter. So we kind of have this nice smooth curve. And one of the things that's so great about soap skin, um, there's some other methods I think that don't, that will interpolate. And so they don't preserve exactly these edges, but now I can take this as a surface or as a group and, and put it back where I, where I took it from and it will match up to those edges really nicely. Mm -hmm. The other thing, what were you saying? I was just going to say that uh, a lot of people forget that you can use soap skin and bubble just to create the skin and not put any pressure on it. Cause obviously that's what the bubble part is. You put a pressure and you get it to bulge out, but you don't have to do that. No, so you can do it just to use it like a lofting tool like that. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because I do want to show actually that we're going to add a little bit of pressure because the way that this, like, again, this, this looks nice. This, this is not necessarily how you would you would carve this so it's it's more smooth um, again sort of like this where you just have this really nice gradual very comfortable um, and we're going to create that a little bit by selecting this and actually using the bulge um, so i scaled this up i may need to add more pressure this is always a guessing game hmm. for me i don't know about you Constantly. I'm always like, I better put, uh, I don't know, let's start with 100 and it like blows up like a balloon. I, I'm worried. That, <laughs> or it doesn't move at all. I know. I'm getting beach balled, so I, I, I probably blew it up. I ah. went too far, too fast. And I don't know. Like, when did you say out. it? Bail out. Oh, no. Shame. <laughs> it's too, too late. late. Too little, too late. No, I'll say that. Uh, Ove, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize, is uh, saying that he just added that to his extensions to try out. And it is a cool, uh, it's one of those tools that I, I don't think I ever would have identified as needing that as an extension. But knowing that it's there, I do find uses for it quite a bit. And it is nice thing, to, like Tyson pointed out, it is, it's a free extension. You can just go get it from Sketchy. Is it on Warehouse too? I believe it's on. Yes, I'm sure it's on because I grabbed it earlier. So yeah, grab it, download it. Um, it's not being developed anymore. As far as I know, it has been the same for several years, but it still works with the newest versions of SketchUp. Uh, but yeah, a good tool to just go through and just connect geometry together with a mesh. It's super easy. There's, there's. I mean, Tyson's still going to talk about other ones too. There are other tools that do lofting, which take... <laughs> These, I don't, I'm talking right now. I'm trying to let the beach ball roll out. I know, out. thank you. Um, <laughs> there are other tools that do lofting, but generally speaking, my the thing that I run into with the other lofting tools, and you guys have seen me do this, so this is not a, a, a surprise, is sometimes setting them up and grabbing the right lines and having the right segments can be challenging. Where soap, skin, and bubble just takes whatever you have, traces it in 2D, and then moves those points vertically in 3D and you're connected with a mesh. It's literally uh, that clean. So, sorry, that's all I had. Thank you. And that now was, that was a good effort. Now another really loud song. No, I'm just kidding. I think we're gonna think we're gonna force quit and see where where our last auto save ended up. Um. So yeah, aside from the beach ball, soap skin is usually really stable. That's one of the other nice things about it. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> it, it. I'll say that the things that do make this happen are when when you do things like you increase the mesh too big. Like you went to thirty, which is from ten, which was a good step. Some people go in there, put a thousand in, and want to know yeah. why it's taking so long. The more geometry you have to create, the longer it's going to take. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, I guess too big of increments of pressure. I'm I get confused about how pressure works even. So <laughs> I I do this exact same thing that Tyson did uh, every time I use it. Yeah. Um, darn. Let's let's uh, let's bail out.
We'll see where we end up. No problem. <laughs> Oh, wait, not this one. This was my practice file. Looks similar, but yes. Unlike Aaron, who's brave enough to jump in here and just go to town, I, I was building this out a little bit last night. This is not the one we want. Practicing? Not a game. <laughs> Not a game. All right. This is fine. One of the things about and soap skin is is like you say, it's not developed anymore, but it, it does go back a ways. One of those things that, uh, one of the few things that I can say from architecture school is um, tensile membrane structure. Oh, okay, nice. So it's really great at creating tensile membrane structures. <laughs> I don't know if they, they may be out of vogue. They were really hot when I was going, like, at least is down. That, is that what our airport, the DIA, Denver yeah. National Airport is? Yep. Nice, I like it. Yeah, add it to the vocabulary quiz at the end of the episode. <laughs> see, right back where we started. Now let's see if we can get in trouble again. We'll try <laughs> and just do five. But I see nothing. 20. I see nothing. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on here. Uh, negative Do you have it selected? Oh, yeah, it's, there it's, it's moving going. a little bit. All right, we needed negative. That oh, because look at look at the face you have going up right now. Ew. You have you're pushing your backside up, so it's negative. I'm always pushing my backside up too. <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> but even if I had been pushing it down, why did I? I don't know why we crashed before. I don't know why ten locked it up. No. Yeah. Um. But that's cool because that that does give you a semi-ordered mesh, I'll say, um, with a little bit of a curve on there. I say semi-ordered because that that mesh really isn't optimized to the shape, but. For something like this, where it's a minor detail, minor piece, and once you smooth it, it's going to give you that nice rounded handle, which is just a just a step past what you had hand stitched, which was you know straight faces. Yeah, but you're right when you say semi ordered because it does create some messiness, and we'll if we try to merge this in with our other mesh, we'll see that. So I'm going to type in 0.1 because I scaled it up by 10, so 0.1 is Back down. And yeah, let's smooth this. Let's get the uh, bigify again. Yeah, somebody was asking about um, Zaha Hadid buildings and using like a similar, which kind of goes back to what you're talking about before here with the fountains of, mm -hmm. you know, you can use the same technique to uh, to build like to model buildings as well. But uh, have you done any um, Zaha Hadid buildings? I know we've had like suggestions from in the past. But... Nothing I can think of. Um, we're talking about like these kind of swooping, what, what was the tensile something thing thing? Some... <laughs> Membrane <Those>. was in there. <laughs> um, yeah, we've never really done anything like that. We, and we did the, uh, what's it called? The Burj Al Arab. Uh, mm. which kind of has that that shape that say the sail shape um but it's not it's not a tensile structure actually it's i mean as far as i know it's actual like glass and stuff so mm -hmm. um, so one of the things as as tyson is closing up this this piece right here 
one of the things I was just going to say is where, where I find that uh, it gets a little weird sometimes with soap, skin, and bubble is when you have those small skinny spots and the edges. The big volume right. in the middle will have this nice smooth piece, but yeah, if you have those little tiny edges and it stitches that together, sometimes it'll make decisions that are a little off of what little. you actually want. Funky. So if you're doing something that, that it sits out by itself, like a sail or a, you know, sunshade or a drape or something like that, it works perfect. It's everything you need. Like Tyson was pointing out, this is illustrating that when you're incorporating that mesh into another mesh, it can sometimes get a little bit, a little bit odd. Which usually just means, you know, you still end up doing a little bit of hand stitching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and to that point, so let's let's see what happens. Um, if we go into here, and uh, uh, let's see, yeah, uh, explode this. It could line up in some areas, but we're likely going to get. Tiny little slivers that do not want to resolve. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, what I've done before is just used the move command to grab those points and stick them where I want them. But, you know, as we're, you know, this, this point we're experimenting and playing with different options. Um, your call if you want to actually do the cleanup or move on to the next, <laughs> <laughs> next way to do it. But uh, that's what it would take with this is, is, uh, some fine tuning of that mesh to line that mesh up with the uh, existing edges. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing in here, so if we go, that didn't work. A couple of folks suggesting doing some Frank Geary buildings too for uh, future live streams. So yeah, thanks for the suggestions. Um, you know, most of the streams that we do are from uh, suggested models and stuff. So yeah, we certainly appreciate those and we'll put them on the list for future streams. Um, so the we've hidden no, we've softened a lot of the interior edges, but what I'm doing at this point is I'm hiding the outside edges and um, the purpose for doing that is that if I take then and do the same here where I, let's see if we can hide these, then again, we don't, we don't actually, so then Oh, I'm going to have to unhide last and then I'm going to be in trouble here. Ugh. <laughs> Let me just move this aside. So now I've got hidden edges. If I move this back into place, um, we're not actually resolving that geometry together. So we're not creating some of those weird pinch points. It also doesn't exactly look maybe how we want, but it's just another way to approach this. Um, but the point of doing the soap skin bubble, if you look at this, was rather than sort of a more abrupt kind of uh, results that we got from stitching is that we have we do have a little bit more of a rounded result mm -hmm. so yeah you know, both both good whatever your preference is stitching is a little cleaner and and simple but soap skin is pretty easy to do too yeah for sure so we've got that um
one other thing that I was going to show is basically another version of slope skin, but the results tend to be a little bit cleaner. The difference though is that you don't have that bulge, so we don't have as much control over which direction we're getting that compound curve in. Right. But if we use um, Fredo's Curveloft tool, I believe it's called, yes, from uh, Skin Contours. So there's three options here in the Curveloft. And by the way, if somebody's really good at Curveloft, you may be able to create the shell and the resulting curves. And uh, and we could use actually the first option from Curveloft, the, the loft, but um, I was having trouble getting that working. And I think the effort to make that work was definitely not not worth it for, for the results, which just, I wasn't too worried about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, as long as you get the result, then that's, what matters. Also, shout out to Nerman for uh, predicting the future. And he said a, a few minutes ago, you could just use Curveloff for that part. So, well, yes. Um, here yes, we are. Uh, so let's use, uh, if we do this, there we go. And sure, let's just say, yep, looks good. And it does. And the results, like we say, as opposed to, uh, I mean, this looks exactly, uh, uh, we're very similar to our skinning think if we turn the interpolation up, we'll get some more results, but yeah. Like I said, the only difference is we don't now have the, that option to bulge and, and create kind of that, let's say, compound curve. Yeah. But, but it's quick. It's super quick, yeah. and it's clean, mm -hmm. cleaner than we got from uh, soap skin. So, again, whatever your preference is. Yeah. All right. You know what? That's about where we're at. Because um, at this point, um, to really, you know, go in and do more detail on this, we basically use one of these three methods and start creating curves on different parts of the handle and on the um, front here. Mm -hmm. But since we've shown how to do it, we could just be like, all right, that's, that's what it's at. Yeah, know. it works for what me. Think? Put it on 3D Warehouse and have folks do that if they wish. Get it. That's looking pretty pretty slick for a two hour, less than two hour model. You can do all right. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, so if, uh, if you all want, we can throw this up and then you can go at it. And uh, oh, yeah, and then, you know, I'll, I'll take those $5,000 orders in. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> Got it. I am going to throw this in place here. Get that final thing up there. Yeah. Um, I did. I just. All right. I, I can't help myself. I, I got a comment on the uh, the building requests. Uh, we're all for doing architectural buildings, but there are some buildings that are just very difficult to model. And I, I this is by no way a diss on Frank Gehry, but some of his paper or some of his work is based off of you know like taking a piece of paper and wadding it up and. Um, I don't know. It's just tough to reproduce. That's what I was <laughs> going to say. Uh, you know, like we looked at a challenge of the Sydney Opera, House. Sydney Opera House, which Tyson did an amazing job of modeling. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was six surfaces. Some Frank Gehry buildings are hundreds of surfaces at odd angles. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like if we did something like that, we could do something like a spiritual successor to one of his buildings and play around with some designs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. That's my thought. Tyson, what are your thoughts when somebody says, why don't you do a Gary building? Uh, my thoughts are no. <laughs> Concise. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> to be polite. My mom taught me to be polite, but no. So maybe a Gary-esque building one day, <laughs> but uh, yeah, to, yeah, to try to match that, just, just a complicated one, for sure. Yeah. 
and just tough for a couple hours stream. Yeah. You know, um, and we've talked about that too. That's one of the things we try to do when we do these, uh, streams is we try to come up with something that can come to a, maybe not the ultimate end model, but a good solid stopping point after two hours. And, uh, like Tyson has done here perfectly. I mean, this is for a two hour model. This looks rock solid. Um, and some of the, but so, some models, some buildings you just look at and you're like two hours. Eh, meh, meh. <laughs> That's more like a weekend plan or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I hope it goes without saying though, like, please make suggestions. We actually are constantly like, come on, what's a, what's a good idea? What, what are we going to do this, this time around? Um, but wow, I, I, maybe we'll need to bring in a guest presenter. Somebody from the chat can come in and, uh, tackle one of these, uh, Hadid buildings <laughs> one of these days. We'll fly out. We're not going to fly out. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's comments are not legally binding. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, so DQ was wondering about if we wanted to bevel the inside. Um, I think personally, if, if well, I'm going to throw my thoughts out, Tyson, because I think what I would do is do an offset of that inside circle and then move it around a little bit. So there's little to no actual bevel at the bottom, but it bevels on the handle side more. And then probably use something like curve aloft to go link, link those, those pieces together. Are we talking the inside of the handle, like yeah, here? The hole there. And um, I think what you'll see, what I've seen out there in, in some of these examples is, yeah, I wouldn't try and do this thing as a whole, but it would be more of a... Right. Something like this, and then it comes up. And then the... I'll, you know, yeah. fix that, but cleaner transition there, but the similar idea then, right? It's going to be yeah. two separate lofting sections rather mm -hmm. than just one. Same methodology as back here, but, um, but th because this is sort of true of the, the plane, the way they're built, you don't have the space down here. A lot of these are built with this mass embedded, not all, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. So if you were going, if you were right now, Tice, if you want, I'm not saying you have to do that, but if, if you're going to go do it, which, which of those, uh, methods you explored, would you go use to actually finalize your model? If you were going to go do those. Um, you, you know what, because the point of this is to sort of explore, explore and potentially be like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'd want to build this. I would lean towards the easy side of of uh, maybe the spline tool because it it's just a not that much faster but it's just a fast way to basically get to stitching and stitching is clean and uh, some of us are suckers for just clean geometry um soap skin bubble as awesome as it is and and you get really good results in certain environments but like for me i just want a little bit that'd be mm -hmm. my so stitching or Curve aloft to basically do the same thing. Yeah. That'd that makes be my... sense. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, plus the size comes down too, right? Because we always talk about that on our streams. We talk about modeling differently depending on the final use of the model. So if your final, if the point of this thing is to just have a model to kind of explore how you might go carve this out of hand, by hand, then stitching would be more than enough. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna throw some wood grain texture on here and render it because you're gonna sell these planes on a website, then you'd probably, maybe that's where you do a nice high res soap skin bubble and go back and you know clean those edges up where you need to. Yeah. And Jody wants more brass. Of course he does. <laughs> <laughs>
we move this back. Do you guys notice how I said, not that you have to do this, Tyson, and then Tyson's like, we'll watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Done. It nice. You know, it is nice because this is one of the things that, uh, Tyson, now I want you to, to fill in your comments on this too, but as you sit and you model stuff for people and you explain your step over and over again, you know, like now I'm doing this and here's why I'm doing this. Every once in a while, it's nice to just go, I know how to do this, head down, get her done. Knock it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Kenny was asking why you, uh, you, you rotate the piece before doing a uh, curve aloft on it. Um, you know what? That's because Keggy knows, I assume, that it doesn't matter. I did that because it does matter with soap skin and I was, I'm still in that mindset. Right. right. Soap skin has like, like a directional, um, but you're right. Uh, doesn't matter. Sorry. That's a good point hmm. for yeah. that tool. When soap skin first creates the mesh that it's going to put on the curves, it puts it on a horizontal plane and then drops the edges to your, to your curves. So you have to do that, but that, that's good. Good call out. Well, now I can't resolve my geometry. Is that it up the top? You know, this is, this is one that I get pinged for often. Uh, knowing that this was a symmetrical piece, you probably could have just modeled half in the component. You, sir, are correct. Ooh. Sorry, I get called out on it constantly. I felt like I had to feel... It feels, <laughs> it feels pretty good saying that to somebody else. I, I know why you guys do it now. Well, it's it's, it's kind of funny. Um, like when you... We, I think people will appreciate, right, that when you model based on sort of how you start and if you planned to do that from the beginning versus when you kind of get caught up in the middle and be like, why don't I just cut this in half? But in my case, or in a lot of cases, yeah. And this was actually all symmetrical. We could have done a lot more. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was like, uh, let's just create this massing from the beginning. I don't know where this will be until we actually intersect it. At that point, we should have made it half. Good call. Oops. Anyway, uh, let's call it because I'm just going to keep. That sounds good. Yeah. Tweaking. Right. Awesome. Well, I want to say great job and thank you, Tyson, for, for doing that. That's uh, a good, like I said, I think it's an awesome looking model. I think that turned out really, really well. Um, so next week, again, we don't, uh, we're, we're going to go a whole week without another event now till next Friday, because we still don't have anything to fill a place of fireside chat yet. Do you, feel, do you feel like I'm hinting at something, guys? I could be hinting at something. But right now, we don't have anything else to fill that gap. So we'll be coming back here this Friday, one week from today, next Friday, and uh, we'll be modeling something else in the studio. It's going to be a little different experience. We're not going to have everybody here like we do right now um but it's still going to be fun we're going to model something i'm not sure exactly what it's going to be we'll uh, we'll figure that out through our forum so if you don't follow already check out forums.sketchup.com and uh yeah that's where we announce things and make decisions like what we're going to model but uh that is it for now so mm -hmm. on behalf of our entire sketchup <clears throat> team more specifically tyson matt and a little bit of Jody in the chat. <laughs> we thank you guys for hanging out with us. Hope you have a great week. Stay safe, stay sane, and hopefully we will see you again soon. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>